Hello Whiskey Wingnuts, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm your host Mark and this is Whiskey Review number 117. 117? Yes, it's 117. We're going back to Scotland, a single malt from the Speyside region known as Craig Elliki, which you see in front of us here. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. I'm sure some of my subscribers will let me know if I've uh, made a fumble there. Let's go ahead and get it poured right away. This one is 46% ABV and it's unchill filtered. No mention of color on the bottle or the package. So we will just uh, assume that, uh, well, if any, not very much. Look how light that is. That's a very light colored spirit. Unchill filtered, 46%. Doesn't get much better than that, unless you increase the ABV, of course. We'll let this sit a little while. It's 13 years old, so we should let it sit for about 13 minutes, but I won't do that because I simply don't want to make you wait all that long. If you're new to the channel, thank you for tuning in, and uh, to my returning subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support. There was a bit of a break there. Um, I should have put out some new reviews last Friday and earlier this week, uh, this week being, what is it today, the... Um, I don't know, the 19th, perhaps, uh, of, of October. Unfortunately, my daughter was quite quite sick last Friday on my recording day, so there went the, uh, uh, the schedule. So sorry about that. Anyway, we're back on it. Uh, last one was uh, a review of uh, bur uh, the bourbon, a review of a budget entry-level basic blended scotch whiskeys. Check that one out. That was 116, and now we're back to the... Uh, let's say the connoisseur's uh, choice for whiskey, the single malts from Scotland, okay? A um, little bit of information about the distillery before we get into the nosing and the tasting, all right? So Craig Ellicke, if you're not aware, this is owned by um, Dewars, and Dewars in turn is owned by Bacardi. So a uh, big, big company behind uh, this brand, and uh, hats off to them for keeping this pretty much a, uh, what can I call it, a craft style of uh, single malt scotch whiskey. Uh, I mentioned it's Speyside. It's located in Aberlour, in fact, in Banffshire, and it was founded in 1891. Um, there was a, a group of people known as Craigellicky Distillery Company, which was led by Alexander Edward, um, and then shortly thereafter sold to Peter, I think it's Mackay. So we see Edward and Mackay on the label there. Um, <clears throat> then it was sold to Distillery Company Limited and a whole bunch of other, a procession of other larger and larger conglomerates, then United Distillers, then Diageo. So this was formerly owned by Diageo, uh, Dewars, I should say. Um, and no, is that right? No, no, that's not right. Anyway, so Diageo, United Distillers, uh, John Dewar and Sons first, and then Diageo bought John Dewar and Sons, uh, who then in turn sold it to Bacardi. Um, anyway, now this was released just in 2014, so it's pretty recent, uh, very recent bottling. Anything else to talk about? Some interesting things about this distillery. They have a very, very unique feature, which is called a worm tub. This is the original style of cooling the spirit as it comes out of the still, which is very hot. So it goes up uh, the, the, up the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, oh, what's that called? It goes up, 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 down the line arm, and uh, then it's, it goes around and around and around in what's called a worm tub, which is basically a big copper pipe that gets uh, smaller and smaller as it, uh, curls around and around and around, uh, giving lots of copper contact to the spirit. Copper, in fact, is kind of known as uh, perhaps the fourth ingredient in in Scotch whiskey. The first ones being water, mal malted barley, and yeast, uh, and then copper, and then finally uh, oak. Now, they're not really ingredients because nothing's being added, but as it passes through, there's a bit of reaction going on there with the copper and the spirit. So, so anyway, so uh, uh, the worm tubs, very interesting. And there's pictures here 
uh, of them being installed. So you can see that being replaced, I guess. Another great thing is what a forward thinking distillery they have a female master blender. There went my file, uh, names named uh, Stephanie McLeod. Anyway, so you can also see her photo right there. There she is. Uh, good job with this one. Now, I'm not sure if she's actually the master distiller involved, but she would have chosen the casks that went in to make this, um, uh, this one. Uh, even though it's a single malt, it's a blend of different casks. Each cask holds, you know, 200 to 600 liters, and then they mix them all together. Now, I, I believe this one is entirely, if not uh, pretty nearly entirely, ex-bourbon casks. And I would probably say mostly first filled based on the smell. So we'll get into that now. And before we have, uh, before we, we get into the nose, we'll have a very short advertisement right there. All right, welcome back. Onto the nose now, Craig Ellicky, 13 year old. It's very different from other space ciders. It's very herbal. When I smell this, I smell something almost tequila-esque about it. So floral and herbal. And then in the background, you've got that vanilla and uh, some sort of a sugary note coming through too. Uh, my notes, what did I write here? I wrote tequila añejo, herbals, lemongrass, white pepper. And I wrote that it's almost rye-like. So if you're a rye, a straight rye or a Canadian rye drinker and you want to find a nice single malt, this might be one that you want to try. I found with time, believe it or not, I got some beef jerky and some dry ribs. Dry ribs, you know, the salt and peppered uh, dry ribs that they often serve at, uh, at pubs. Uh, and a bit of mustard. Anyway, so give it time. You might be surprised at the uh, the multi-course meal you get out of uh, Craig Alecky. All right, well, let's get on to the, uh, the taste. Cheers, all. Very flavor-packed. Let me try that again. Now it is sweet, a little bit sour, and quite spicy. And then it really develops dry. Um, and again, these herbals are so potent. There's also something very meaty about this too, and it's known as that, which is interesting. Um, what did I write here? Tequila, lemon, so some lemon flavors, yes. Simple syrup with a, a dash of bitters. I was gonna say a bash of ditters. Try that again. And then deep in there, there's some vanilla, which really hits it just as you swallow. You get a little rush of vanilla coming through, and then you get these dry herbal notes and spices also. Quite interesting. This reminds me a lot of Tobermory um, over on the Isle of Mull. Now, if you are someone that's looking for something sweet and easy to drink, recognizable flavors, I would suggest try this at a, a pub or a whiskey bar first before you buy. This may not be your style. But if you're a flavor hunter, someone who likes different flavors, new flavors, something new, this is definitely a nice one. 
and it's not that expensive, which is great. I, I got this at Duty Free, coming back from uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I believe uh, for the liter, I think I paid about 90 something Canadian dollars. So that was nice. All right, we're gonna add some water. And I'm gonna be fairly generous with the water because uh, it's got quite a potent flavor profile. And I think that um, you can, I mean, start start minimally, start with just a little bit and then build up. But you can probably get uh, into maybe even a third, uh, a third half teaspoon, so one and a half teaspoons uh, into your uh, Glen Cairn with about 30 milliliters in it. Let it mix up. So this is one of the main ingredients in the Dewar's Blend, Dewar's Blended Scotch Whiskey, which I've reviewed. I will put a link towards, uh, to, uh, to lead to that at the end of this review. Interesting blended Scotch Whiskey. A lot of people, a lot of single malt drinkers refuse to drink blended whiskeys. And that's their prerogative. But I think that they're missing out on, on something interesting. And especially what I like to do um, is to take the blended Scotch whiskey that you know has a certain single malt in it and then add a little more and see what happens. It's a nice way to stretch your budget because, you know, it's a third, a third of the cost of single malts. Yeah, still very herbal. Add a touch more. There we go. Now, what I wrote here, when I added water, I found a little bit of peat emerged along with some wood smoke. And I would say that that is the case. You know, reconfirming my, my former tasting notes. Sometimes they differ. You know, your nose is not the same day in, day out, and possibly even. The whiskey does different things uh, day in and day out. Yes, a little bit more um, wood, warm wood, like a sauna, a dry sauna. And you'll notice that the, well, maybe you don't, I noticed the fruit flies don't come around for Craig Ellicke. Yes, so some wood smoke, a little bit of peat smoke, uh, some toasted, toasting, I should say toasting wood. And yet still very herbal, um, still very tequila-esque. All right, let's try that now. We'll have another short advertisement right here. Welcome back on to the taste with water for Craig Yellicky, 13 year old. Hmm. It's much more approachable. It's actually a lot sweeter. This reminds me of a sweetened uh, black tea. Um, so like iced tea with, uh, with, with something sweet in it. That's how we drink it in Canada. In USA, they drink a lot of iced tea with absolutely no sweetener in it at all. Although I've heard that there is some parts where it is sweetened. Anyway, so sweetened cold tea. and braised, almost burnt meat. So as you're grilling the meat, you get that, um, well, the, the blackened parts and that smell and the flavor that comes from that. Um, and I wrote here also sugar cube, still big on herbals, something almost Negroni-esque here. So 
still quite dry also. So imagine you're having yourself a nice barbecued, uh, flame barbecued steak. A little bit of a blackened, um, you know, blackened crust. Not overly so. And then you've got yourself uh, a nice bottle of uh, tequila añejo there as well. And you're having those together. Um, and the tea also, anyway, interesting, very interesting. It's very different. And um, I almost don't know what to say about it until I really, really think about it for a long, long time. But yes, uh, if you like Tobermory, this is one to try. Okay. And the finish, again, tequila, it's very dry, wood smoke, and there's a puff of sweetness there as well. Hmm. Well, very interesting, very engaging. Um, I probably wouldn't want to drink this every night, um, but uh, it's definitely well made and definitely worth having in your, uh, in your home bar, okay? Now, I haven't scored this yet, so what am I going to give this? In terms of the, the workmanship involved here, uh, top-notch flavors, uh, I do like it. Not 100% my style, but uh, I cannot you know, say that I don't like it just because it's not you know, exactly what I like. I mean, uh, come on. Anyway, we're going to give it 85 out of 100. And that is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Craig Alecky, 13 year old. And we're going to call this one the Tequila Sunrise. <laughs> That's the nickname. Um, what do I like about it? I like the herbals. Now, this would probably do very well in certain mixed drinks. I hope that you try that uh, if you happen to um, experiment. Give it a try. I think you, you can almost forego the bitters uh, with this one. It's got enough herbal punch to it. Um, anything else? It's interesting that um, I really, really loved uh, the Tobermory, which is a similar in, in some ways here. Um, this one also quite nice, but something uh, just not quite my style. Anyway, so 85 out of 100 for... Kegeliki 13 year old unchill filtered and I would say that's probably natural color I wish they'd let us know anyway let's give it one more shot just before we go time really smoothens this out as well take your time with this one let me know your thoughts I'd love to hear it please comment don't forget to share the video if you have someone who likes um, single malt, send that to them. And if you haven't subscribed, and if you've been watching until now, which I hope is, is true, then why not subscribe? You can click the link right down there in the corner, go back to the main page and hit subscribe, okay? Don't forget to like it also and tune in next time for something else, something back from Tennessee. Take care now.